Hey everyone, it's Salman here. Let's talk about the Windwalker Monk. Now, the Windwalker Monk in Shadowlands mechanically hasn't changed overly much, okay? It's still pretty much the same spec, it's still pretty much playing the same outside of a couple of new added abilities in our baseline toolkit, uh, a couple of changes in our talents, nothing too big. And of course, the addition of uh, uh, new toys in Covenant abilities and some older toys in Legendaries that some of you might be pretty happy to hear that they are back. Now, the fact that they haven't changed much is both a positive and, and well, a negative. Uh, for me, I think that Windwalker is one of the most fun and well-designed melee specs to, to an extent. I think they are a very fun spec to play. They are rather unique in their mechanics, especially due to your mastery that uh, rewards good gameplay, uh, but that, yes, over time can get a little bit too um, predictable, samey, but overall I think is one of the melee specs in the entire game that I have the most fun playing. Now, there is, of course, issues issues in the game, uh, in the spec rather, primarily when it comes down to numbers, um, scaling and many other things that have happened to uh, Windwalker over the course of BFI, Legion and since ever really uh, that has really brought the Windwalker down in that uh, regard. But again, gameplay, it still is a very fun spec to play and those people that generally just stay as Windwalker monks, they do it because they enjoy it, right? They do it because they enjoy it. So, so let's talk about everything Windwalker. Let's talk about baseline changes, talents, conduits, legendaries, and see if some of those killing issues are somewhat toned down, to see if they are somewhat fixed, and to see if actually these new abilities, these new toys add more fun to the spec, even more fun to the spec. So, baseline changes. Uh, nothing too much outside of, well, the biggest one, of course, is our Zwen, our Celestial. The White Tiger is now baseline. They removed this from the talents and we have something to replace it and we'll, we'll talk about it. There is a lot, actually, to talk about that. So, our Zwen is now baseline and I don't know about you, but I love Zwen. I think it's just a cool ability. Now, mechanically, gameplay-wise, is really not adding much, right? It's not adding much. You just press it, it deals damage, he cleaves, right? He hits uh, three targets and he deals a pretty decent amount of damage, though he doesn't, he doesn't scale all that well and usually over the course of patches, he kind of goes down in damage. Uh, one of the reasons why we spec out of it um, but we do have a conduit that might improve that, okay? So we'll talk about that later. So yeah, overall, I think Zwen having it baseline is just so cool. Like I've been doing a lot of dungeons and finding tough uh, trash packs to use it to use him on. It's actually really fun to then combine that with Storm, Earth, and Fire and have this entire uh, talent tree to uh, this uh, row of the talents to play around with is pretty good. So I really like that. And then we have the other big change is on Touch of Death. Okay, so Touch of Death is now back to being the old Touch of Death. Is no longer this window where you do a lot of damage and then you get a percentage in the end. It's now an executability just like it was in the past. I cannot show you here, but I'll put some footage in the background. Okay, so you can snipe targets, you can uh, execute targets essentially with this really big hit that feels, of course, very satisfying. And on some tough enemies in dungeons and whatnot, it feels really good to just instantly kill them. Some people have issues with this ability, some people love this ability, so do let me do let me know what you think down below. But yeah, it's pretty much working as it used to work for the most part. Uh, we also have Expel Harm. I don't think we had this. I think this is one of the unpruned abilities. It's essentially a self-heal that you have, and it also deals some uh, additional damage. Um, not entirely sure if this is something that you actually gonna want to click in your in like in your rotation. Maybe the numbers will tell you so in the end. But so far, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, tuning is still yet to be done. Outside of that, we also have Fortifying Brew. I also don't think we had this in BFI, so it's an extra survivability ability that we have, and then you can spec into things like 
dampen harm. So yeah, you do have a lot of survivability. Uh, Touch of Karma is still is that degenerate ability that we still have that also a lot of people hate and some people do love it. Uh, and we still have the talents to double down on that. Uh, other baseline changes comes down to target caps, the very unfortunate target caps. So we have target caps on pretty much every ability except for Whirlwind Dragon Punch. So do take that in mind. Um, obviously, this is a talent, but yeah, it doesn't have a target cap, at least for now. So on Fist of Fury, now it has a target cap of five uh, targets, or well, six, counting your primary targets. So uh, all targets except your main one is going to take 50% 50% 50% of the damage of Fist of Fury, as you can see, so half the damage. It is unfortunate, it is unfortunate. I really don't like the AoE target cap here in Shadowlands, but hey. Uh, Spinning Crane Kick also has a target cap. It has a target cap of six enemies, so essentially the same as Fist of Fury, okay? The same as Fist of Fury, um, which again is very unfortunate. And I think that Spinning Crane Kick it still is a very fun ability to use. I love the, the, uh, the sort of mechanic around Spinning Crane Kick of you like, um, you know, top targeting and then to make the most out of that ability. I always found that so fun and so uh, not super high skill cap thing, but something that rewards good gameplay over, uh, which is kind of like the theme of Wind Walker, uh, rewarding good gameplay. But uh, this ability has been kind of always toned down. Like in, I think in BFA was when we got the, 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 or maybe it was Legion, where we had the reduction to how many targets we could, uh, you know, uh, stack up the buff to increase the damage well buff quote unquote to increase the damage so now you have a target cap on top of that but you know everyone is getting that sort of nerf quote unquote but there is some pretty crazy stuff going on with spinning crane kick in your legendaries in your conduits and in your talents that we'll get to that makes spinning crane kick really fun to press like yes you don't hit all targets and that sucks but it Common, the synergies that there's going on with is for a spinning crane kick, you really get some bombastic uses, quite literally, of spinning crane kick, which is quite nice. So everything else is the same. I think there's a slight increase of range on some of like sweep, I think. Yeah, I think it was. But uh, yeah, everything is the same as before. So let's talk about talents and then move on to legendaries and covenant abilities and conduits. So, talents here, uh, well, just like our baseline cool, uh, toolkit, there's not a whole lot of changes. Like first year, second year, third year, everything is exactly the same, okay? Everything is exactly the same. The big changes came to this talent right here because we have, uh, well, Resting Jade Wind, just to point out, it also has a target cap of six enemies. Yay. Uh, we have Dance, Dance of Chi Chi, okay? So this is... A very cool ability where spending Chi has a chance to make your next spinning crane kick free and deal 200% more damage. Now, it is RNG, which is something that many Windwalkers might not really enjoy. I mean, the, the spec overall is one of the few specs in the entire game that has little to no RNG. The only other RNG that we have is the blackout kick uh, procs. Other than that, the spec is super predictable, super deterministic, which is well, it's the identity of it due to our mastery and and whatnot, right? So it is a proc. Now, personally, I enjoy getting this proc. I think it makes the spec slightly more exciting. And it's not like this proc that you are super dependent on. It's something that I feel like adds a little bit of spice to the spec. It usually comes on quite regularly, so I never felt like I was getting it in the wrong moments. You get those procs randomly, you use it, you get a lot of damage out of that, and it's fine. It is fun. It deals, uh, again, it deals a lot of damage. And now, if you use it in single target, it is still pretty fun to use, but over time, like say in a raid boss fight, long periods of uh, fight, hit combo is likely to overcome it, right? Hit combo is just so good. And getting those procs and just getting that big spinning crane kick in a single target fight probably is not gonna be worth, I don't want to be 100% uh, say that for 100% sure, but probably not gonna be worth saying raid boss fights. But when you are in a dungeon and you're using this and you're go going to face a boss, it still is pretty fun to use that. It, it, it does benefit your mastery because you know it's another ability that you can click, okay? 
So now the, the, the cool thing about this is that you're gonna have a lot of cool things that are gonna buff your spinning crane kick to do some pretty crazy stuff uh, whenever you know you have to cleave or a weep. Now, just to, for completion's sake, these talents again are the same. Nothing to say about them. So let's talk about the crazy things you can do with spinning crane kick, which will involve uh, legendaries and conduits. So uh, as for conduits, I'm gonna put uh, really simple explanation if you are completely clueless to what they are um, just so you get an understanding so feel free to pause the video and get that very simple explanation to what they exactly are here in Shadowlands so legendaries um, we have well I have it equipped we have this one which is whenever you use Fist of Fury you're gonna gain a stack of Chi energy up to 20 stacks and the, the tooltip is wrong, it's not expel harm, it's spinning crane kick. When you use spin uh, spinning crane kick, you're gonna cause this energy to detonate in a chi explosion, right? And the damage is increased by 5% for each stack of chi energy. So every time you're gonna use a Fist of Fury, you're gonna get these stacks, right? Now these stacks actually, you know, they ramp up the more targets you hit. So if you hit a, a single target, they're gonna stack really slow. But when you're hitting three targets, four targets, five targets, which are usually the numbers of trash packs in dungeons, this is gonna stack up pretty quickly. Right, this is gonna stack up pretty quickly. And then, when you're gonna press your chi, you're gonna get this big bursty damage out of that spinning crane kick. Now, if you have a proc on top of that, it's even more fun to press. Now, obviously that is RNG, so you cannot always time that correctly with your, uh, you know, with your Fist of Fury. You can play around it a little bit. You can play around it a little bit, but you cannot time that correctly. But you can do some pretty crazy things with that and you mix that in with a Whirlwind uh, Dragon Punch and all of that and you get some really nice uh, burst AoE damage that feels really satisfying to press. It feels really satisfying to press. At least for me, I found it really fun to press. So that's the spinning crane kick. Then you have a conduit, okay? A conduit that is further improving your spinning crane kick damage, uh, the buff that you get from striking unique targets by another 10%. Now, one thing that you have to take in mind about conduits is that the, the, the damage percentage of it may increase because they're gonna have an item level, I believe. And so they may increase likely, not entirely sure on that, I don't think Blizzard has been completely clear on that, but it's likely that the, the, the percentage, the power level of conduits are gonna increase the higher item level you can acquire them. So that is gonna make Spinning Crane Kick hit even harder. So as you can see, Spinning Crane Kick is a pretty fun ability to use, even more satisfying to use than before. Yes, you do have the target cap. Yes, you have to arm some RNG with this, but the combination of, of those four things is pretty fun. It's pretty fun. So that's this combination that is pretty cool. Let's talk about other legendaries and conduits. Uh, so, other legendaries that you might have that you might find pretty interesting that you can use to spice up your gameplay is this one. Okay, is this one. Which, your cheat spenders is gonna increase the damage of your next Crackling Jade Lightning. So this is pretty much the Legion legendary that we had. Now, I personally, I never was a huge fan of this. Why? Because Crackling Jade Lightning doesn't allow you to move when you cast it. And so I don't really like that. But it works pretty much the same. It's not as strong, as I believe, as the Legion legendary. I don't remember the numbers exactly. But you're going to stack up this buff up to 20 stacks. You're likely going to stop at around 18, 19. And then you can just going to get this extra ability that you're going to press, right? It also triggers your mastery. So there is that too. But you have other choices. You do have other choices. Let me change. You do have other choices like this one, which was a tier set in Legion. I think, which is making your Fist of Fury, when it ends, to grant your Rising Sun Kick an extra chance to critical strike by 30% for 5 seconds, and your ri Rising Sun Kick's critical strikes reduce the cooldown of Fist of Fury by 1.5 seconds. So, it's just something that you're gonna have, it works for pretty much every scenario, and it's just a simple buff to, it's a damage increase buff, and add some extra interaction in between your you know, your uh, Fist of Fury and your uh, Rising Sun Kick, which is pretty nice too. It's pretty nice too. Other than that, what else we have? Then we have a couple of other interesting things. So this is the other one. 
we have this one which is giving you haste for 300, 318, 32 seconds. Uh, <laughs> that's a bug, obviously. Uh, so it's giving you for 15 seconds, okay? So every time you summon your Zwen, you're gonna gain this haste buff, okay? You're gonna gain this haste buff. So it's pretty nice too, it's not a huge deal. Uh, it is buffing, obviously, your Zwen because haste makes your little tiger here attack faster, so it's a direct buff to him. But it's not a huge, huge deal for what I can tell. Maybe if the haste was higher to provide like a mini bloodlust every time you go into your Zwen window, that could potentially be pretty cool. But as it stands, it's just, it's, it's okay. It's a haste, it's, it's good. But it's okay, not too exciting. Um, you have touch of death, cooldown reduced by six by sixty what, by one minute, which is also pretty nice. It falls in the same category as the Zwen one. Simply nice. Then you have this one, which is pretty neat as well, which is causing your Tiger Palm to provide you a charge of a 10 yards range and increase your critical strike by 25%, which is actually quite high, but you cannot get that buff every 30 seconds. Now, Numerically, again, this is not super huge, kind of like the, 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 the Zwen one again, right? It's just something that is actually pretty fun to use. You get just this swap, like, whoop, whoop, right? It's pretty fun to use. <laughs> it is pretty fun to use. Whoop, right? It is pretty fun to use. It provides you some extra burst damage when you are in your opener and whatnot, which is nice. But obviously, things like your Crackling Great Lightning, the, uh, the the one for Spinning Crane Kick, or the um, Fist of Fury Rising Sun Kick ones. Obviously, you don't even really need to do any number crunching here to figure out that these ones are so much more powerful, right? But it's pretty fun to use. I, I can see myself using this maybe in Torghast or like in the open world, just something I can put. It gives me some extra mobility, not that you like that, but it's pretty fun. Whoop, right? It's pretty funny. Um, so that basically covers legendaries. So what about conduits? What are what else are conduits um, adding to Windwalker? Well, I do have a couple of placed ones, but I have a lot of other ones here in my bag. So we talked about this one, which is directly buffing our spinning crane kick. It's just a damage increase, but it is creating a synergy with the talents with the legendary, which is pretty nice. Now we have this this when one, which is when bond. Now it's just a damage increase, which is uh, abilities that activate combo strikes will reduce the cooldown of Zwen by 0.5 seconds, and it's going to increase its damage by 10%. Now the 10% again may be higher. It's actually even in a different color maybe higher with a higher level conduit. Now, the cool thing about this, outside of you being able to use it more, which is completely fine, you don't need to stack Zwen with any other CD, obviously you can, it will result in bigger damage, but you don't, there's no synergy that really requires you to do that, so getting the, damage, the cooldown reduction is simply nice to use it more often. But the damage increase, especially then as the expansion goes on, as you get higher and higher quality conduits, is likely to increase Zwen's damage, which kind of fixes the scaling issues that Zwen has, which I found that to be pretty interesting. And also is directly benefiting good gameplay by you actively going for a combo strike, so actively using your mastery correctly, which is also pretty nice, it's just emphasizing you playing well. Then we have this one, which is just a simple damage increase of Fuse of Fury by 20%, which is actually quite a lot, and that will ramp up with hires, uh, higher conduits, higher item level conduits, which might get even crazier, and you being able to deal more damage. Again, might fix, again, your somewhat scaling issues. Uh, potentially. I'm not seeing certainties on that. Potentially. Uh, what else we have? Well, we have another one, which is adding extra damage to Stormer Earth and Fire, so your, your big cooldown to deal a, an additional 10% more damage, uh, which is also nice. The only thing with this is gonna be counterintuitive if using this, to say, with adds or in the dungeon, because in those situations, you kinda want your Summer Earth and Fire to you know, spread on targets, so they spread at the mark of the crane, so you can you know, deal more uh, damage. So that's a little bit counterintuitive there, but hey, uh, this one is Covenant ability-wise, which we'll discuss. Now, we do have Finesse ones and Endurance ones, which usually I don't want to touch because it will get repetitive and long. Uh, but I guess I can mention, because there are a couple of interesting ones, like, say, Fortifying Brew gives you a shield, which I think is rather nice. Expel Harm, uh, healing is increased. Uh, a debuff when you use like sweep to for the targets to deal 5% less damage and that will increase again with a higher item level conduits so with some extra utility on there which is actually rather nice um 
when your paralysis and the movement speed is reduced by 60%, which is actually pretty nice as well. And when you use Blackout Kick, there's a 5% chance to give you a charge of roll, so even more mobility, which is also pretty nice. Okay, so that essentially covers conduits and legendary. So let's talk about co uh, covenant abilities and how they hold up here on the Windwalker. Do, do, we, do they add anything interesting? Well, nothing too crazy, but there is the standout. So let's talk about the one I actually have on this character, which is the Night Fake of an ability, which is Feline Stomp. Now this is an absolutely gorgeous ability. Like out of all the Covenant abilities in Shadowlands, this one embodies the Night Fake. It's so fucking cool. So essentially you're gonna slam the ground, you're gonna strike the ground, and it's gonna create this Feline, which is essentially like this blue sparkling tree, right? It's gonna save for 30 seconds. It's gonna deal some damage. The damage is a little bit underwhelming. Now, it is AoE damage, it hits all targets, but it is a little bit overwhelming, personally. And then it's gonna rep Chi and earn, earn, uh, Energy Spheres, so the ones that heal you, out of enemies. And your abilities have a 10% chance of resetting the cooldown of Feline Stomp while fighting inside the Feline. So you're gonna get a couple of procs to uh, use that ability more, which will result in more damage and more spheres. And actually, when you get a lot of procs, it it's absolutely gorgeous because you just fill the battlefield with this blue trees, which is actually kind of silly because there's been points that I had two Windwalker monks in a single dungeon and this area was absolutely brimming with those trees. It's actually kind of silly. Uh, but anyway, how does this ability play out? Well, the, outside of being visually awesome, uh, it's not that useful, right? When you get to gameplay mechanically, it's not that too good, it's not that crazy. Well, for one, the damage is not that uh, beneficial to you. Now, the ability only has a 30 second cooldown and you have the proc, so you can use it quite often, so maybe that's why the damage is not that high. Even though I feel like for what it's doing, like this big AOE, I feel that the damage should be higher and maybe have a bigger cooldown, but hey, that's me. Um, the problem to have with this ability is the fact that it's giving you spheres. Now the spheres of course are useful, they're giving you chi and they're giving you health. And obviously you're gonna need to move over them to, to you know, to pick them up. Uh, the issue with this is that you don't really need resources, right? Actually getting more resources as a Windwalker Monk uh, can usually result going to waste unless you're using Ascension, uh, the talent Ascension, because you have a very strict deterministic why of playing your Windwalker, right? You have this very defined abilities that you're gonna use, right? You're always planning ahead. You're gonna use this ability, then you're gonna use this ability, then you're gonna use this ability, right? To, because of your mastery, right? Because of combo strikes. So you have this sort of why. Now, getting more Chi may help, especially in uh, AoE scenarios for spinning crane kicks and so on, but more, more often than not, it's just gonna go to waste because you don't necessarily need that much. Like I was getting chi from this and playing with this or playing without this didn't make a difference. The only difference that it made is that when I check my chi sometimes, I was just getting way too much chi that I couldn't really dump because I cannot just spam blackout kicks for an example to dump chi because that's not the way you play Windwalker. You cannot repeat the same abilities to dump. You need to weave in different abilities because of combo strikes again. So getting access or getting extra resources doesn't really do much for the way that the spec plays. Again, for the most part. For the most part. So the, those are the issues that I have with Feline Stomp. It is still pretty fucking cool to use, not gonna lie. Now, you do have a Conduit, which directly buffs this Covenant ability, um, which is just a damage increase, okay? It's increasing the damage by 10% per target, but the damage cannot go over 10% of the damage of the overall ability. So it's nice, it's just giving some extra damage to it. If you're going to be doing a lot of dungeons and so on, this might be beneficial if you're using this Covenant ability, obviously. But... Nothing too crazy. Then we have the Venthyr Covenant ability, which is, what is it called? A Fallen Order. <laughs> I forgot that for a minute. Now, this is essentially kind of like a Earth, Storm and Fire, kind of Storm, Earth and Fire type of ability. You're gonna open this mirror, which is like this little uh, blood portal, and monks are gonna come out of that, right? Adepts, monk adepts are gonna come out of that. And they're gonna start damaging the target. And they can also do Fist of Fury for two seconds. There's a, there's a, a small chance of getting Fallen Monks that will uh, 
give you a face of fury. It deals a lot of damage. It deals a lot of damage. Now, it is a little bit boring because mechanically there's nothing to it. You press it, it is going to deal damage, and that's it. You don't have to think about it. There's nothing you can do about it. You just press it, it deals damage. That's it. Now, as for the conduit that you have, it is also pretty boring. It's just increasing the damage by 20%, which is actually quite a lot. So currently, even though this is the most boring ability, numerically, this seems to be a very powerful ability. So take it as you will. Then we have the Necrolord's Covenant ability. Now this one at first I was like, eh, this is not that exciting. But actually, this with the Conduit gets rather nutty. So, it's the Bone bone Dust Brew, okay? Now, what this allows you to do is a 1 minute cooldown ability that you can throw this brew, kind of like uh, the uh, Brewmaster abilities. And it's going to mark these targets for 10 seconds. And then your abilities are going to have a 15% chance to infect, the, to, uh, to essentially, the, your abilities have a 15% chance to deal damage a second time at 25% effectiveness as shadow damage. I don't like the shadow damage part or healing. Uh, but yeah, you're essentially going to get these little replications of your abilities. Plus, when you use spinning crane, t a spinning crane kick, it can refund you chi one chi. Which, again, as we discussed, resources is kind of like, eh, you know, for us. So that part is not a huge deal. Now, the way your AoE abilities work, so your Spinning Crane Kick, your Fist of Fury, or even your Whirlwind Dragon Punch, those abilities have a lot of little hits, right? They hit a lot very quickly and they have a lot of quick hits which means this this damage component of the bone the bone dust brew triggers quite a lot now here it's where it gets more interesting because the conduit the conduit is increasing also the damage that you get the uh, the, 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 the the replication damage that you get by 25 percent which is rather a lot and each time it triggers the cooldown is going to be reduced by 0 0.5 seconds now, when you have a lot of targets, well, let's say five or six, which is the amount that your abilities cap, uh, even though the bone dust, bone dust brew goes to all of them, you're going to be doing your fists, you're going to be doing your spinning crane kicks, you're going to be doing your whirlwind dragon punches, which have a lot of hits, which you can trigger this a lot, which means the cooldown of the ability is going to be reduced so much to a point that I was able to use it almost... I use it, it runs out, I can use it again. Now, it's not always possible, and again, this is a pretty low-geared character, but you can do some pretty cr crazy stuff if you have the conduit active, if you have the conduit placed, which made the ability a lot more interesting. Without the conduit, it's a little boring, you just place it, it's just gonna deal extra damage, you kinda just think about it, okay, I'm just gonna use this every time, I'm gonna, before my Fist of Fury and Spinning Crane Kicks and AoE and so on, uh, just before you deal damage, but with the conduit it got a lot more interesting a lot more interesting and it was actually became pretty fun to use and pretty fun to like try and maximize this this window to try and put out as many spin, spinning crane kicks within the confines of how the spec plays with combo strikes and all but it was really interesting to do that and then just trying to maximize that so i can use more b bone dust brews so i can continue to do that so that was actually kind of fun due to the conduit which was again interesting that the conduit was able to do that to that ability then we have the Cure and Covenant ability. Now this this was the least interesting one that I could play around with. So it's Weapons of Order. And essentially it's going to be buff for 30 seconds. That is going to increase your mastery by 15%. Okay, So it's a flat damage increase essentially. If you're playing correctly with your combo strikes, it's just a flat damage increase. increase. Additionally, a Windwalker's uh, Rising Sun Kick cooldown is going to reset instantly when you press it. And your Rising Sun Kick is going to provide you a buff that for the next 5 seconds your Chi abilities are going to cost one less Chi. So essentially your Blackout Strikes, your Blackout Kicks, are going to be free. And your Rising Sun Kicks, if used within that window, are going to cost just one. Your Fist of Fury is going to cost two. And while the Mastery part is just nice, it's boring because it's the damage increase. Now the rest of the ability just didn't felt all that useful. The idea with this is that you're going to press your Rising Sun Kick, so it goes into cooldown, then you press this, so it resets the cooldown. And then you kind of want to go for a Rising Sun Kick, because obviously it's one of your main abilities. But you're going to do that because of your combo strikes, okay? So you're going to have, you cannot really maximize this to perfection. So you, if you like doing that, this ability is kind of counterintuitive, counterintuitive on there. It's going to be, it's going to annoy you a little bit. 
And then the fact that it's going to reduce g, again, it goes back to the resource talk that we discussed. Getting free blackout kicks and cheaper bright sun kicks and fist of fury is going to make you overcap g. Is the only thing it's going to make you do. Like it's not making the rotation easier, right? Because when you press this, the the only thing is going to happen is just going to get excess chi that you cannot really dump or use because again because of combo strike so you cannot realistically realistically do that now again in certain situations this is going to be useful again if you're using a lot of spinning spinning crane kicks in aoe and stuff like that this might is going to be more useful because you're generally going to spin spend a lot of more chi there but in single targets this didn't felt useful at all it felt like it was doing nothing and if it wasn't doing nothing, it's just making me overcap chi for the most part, for the most part. So unless you go against what the spec is telling you to do, which is the combat strengths, you cannot really make a lot of, out of this ability, which is a little bit sad. It is a little bit sad. And as for the conduit, it's pretty boring as well. It's just increasing the mastery that it provides and the duration uh, that it lasts for 5 seconds and 5%. So there you go. So overall, how is the Windwalker monk playing? Well, it's pretty nice. It's pretty fun. Right, I think that Windwalker, for the most part, throughout the expansions, is always fun to play. I think the core, the fundamentals, the core design of Windwalker is pretty goddamn fun. It's not for everybody, obviously, but it's pretty goddamn fun. And that is still very much here. Now, the new toys, legendaries, do improve the overall spec. The, you have a lot more fun things that you can do due to legendaries. And there's a couple of interesting conduits as well that might improve your scaling issues, right? It may improve your scaling issues. Your Covenant abilities are not super exciting outside of how visually they look. The Bone Dust uh, Brew is pretty interesting. It is pretty interesting for dungeons, but in single target it's not super, super interesting because you're not, you can, you're not gonna be able to reduce that cooldown as much in single target. It's not as valuable there. Um, but other than that, it still is pretty much the fun spec that you know. Is it going to be competitive in numbers? I guess time will tell, but mechanically, gameplay-wise, it's still pretty goddamn fun. And getting all these new abilities back, you know, like Zwan baseline and all of that, it does make for overall fun times. For overall fun times. Okay, guys, so do let me know what you think about down below about uh, Windwalker Monk. What do you would like to see? Maybe improved on the spec? Maybe you would like to see Touch of Karma removed because you hate the degenerate quote-unquote playstyle? And uh, what are the changes you would like to see? here in Windwalker, or if you just like it for a way to, the way that it is, I didn't really care about it, not performing the best it could be, essentially. Yeah. So yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.